morning. And uh, I have prepared a, a written speech because, contrary to Winston said, we're not all bilingual. <laughs> so I will stick to my written things. Um, I'm happy to be here today and to share some views on the EU proposition. And uh, I want to thank the Ancham and uh, Winston especially for his invitation. I have uh, four main points I want to share with you. But first, uh, let me say a word about the expectations we have as a regulator towards the EU project. Of course, we need uh, to adapt the legal framework to the digital environment and to the international dimension of data. But we also want to strengthen Europe in the international competition. And also, we want to keep up with the high level of protection we've been able to offer to our citizens in the last years. And as we know, and as you know, in Europe, personal data is not only a matter of, of business, it's also a matter of uh, fundamental, fundamental rights. So, we must analyze the operational consequences of the text along these key objectives. And as I said, as far as business is concerned, I have four main points I want to show you. The first point is actually a statement. I guess the draft EU regulation is for you a turning point. It's, it's a turning point for business. Why? Because until recent years, business has been a kind of a silent companion for us, for DPAs. You were asking sometimes for advice. You were suffering, as you say, from too heavy notification obligations. And very seldom you were fined. Now, it's a bit different. Business is in the light of privacy. The project simplifies deeply the notification process, but increases, as, as a kind of counterpart, the responsibilities of the data controller in implementing the EU principle, as well as it increases the DPA powers of control and sanctions. So for us, these changes represent a new paradigm in regulation. And we very much favor it, because we think that sharing the load of regulation in the complex and evolutive world we're facing is a necessity, and that co-regulation is the good answer. I think also this evolution is probably today in your own interest, because privacy appears more and more the cornerstone of the digital era, both of a new risk but also both a competitive advantage in the everyday business. So good relationship with the DPA will help you in terms of legal security. My second point is about accountability. Of course, in this context, accountability is a key concept, but it needs to be addressed realistically. Accountability is a plurisemantic word. According to the draft regulation, it covers different means to ensure the protection of personal data in a way adapted to business's reality. Privacy impact assessment, data protection officer, audits, privacy by design, documentation, BCR, etc. In France, actually, we have already been practicing accountability in the last years. We have DPOs, we have privacy seals, and we are about to grant data processing auditing procedures and, we, sorry, we are about to grant seal to data processing auditing procedures and privacy training. We have guidance and referentials, and we have, of course, BCR. You know that several of you know that CNIL has been the sort of champion of BCR. So we very much favor the idea of accountability as it helps to go from theory to practice. 
More generally, we believe that compliance is going to be the issue of the next years. Sanctions is a good deterrence arm for DPA, but it cannot be an everyday way to regulate the data environment. So we need to accompany the business in their compliance efforts, in particular to avoid unpredictable sanctions. <coughs> Accountability gives foreseeability to the business. So we are working in France on the creation of a compliance pact based on the scheme of the BCR. But we also believe that accountability must be linked to binding principles. It is neither a self-regulation process, like a code of conduct self-assessed, not even a framed self-regulation, like a code of conduct controlled by an external entity. It covers regulatory obligations linked to binding principles. So therefore, there is quite a different of approach between the European approach and the US one, even if we are converging in terms of substance. Under the US approach, Nothing is really mandatory, because the possible Bill of Rights that was evoked by Mr. Obama will not be binding, and the codes of conduct apply only to the ones that want to have a code, <coughs> which means that the FTC will only control data controllers that have committed them themselves to privacy. <coughs> Let me add the last point on accountability. Eventually, this toolbox must be flexible. As so, there must be some scalability in it. Scalability is a key element of the balance between accountability and the DPA's power of sanction. So measures implemented by organizations should be proportional, depending on the nature of processing and the size of the organization. So accountability must be adapted to the size of the company. And also sanctions should be modulated when the company has implemented accountability mechanisms. However, the impact should not be automatic on sanctions, but it should work as a sort of leniency program like the competition authority has. So to conclude on accountability, we believe that this European approach is clear, will provide you with legal certainty, more foreseeability, in particular with regard to sanctions. Now, I have two other points, which are less positive, I guess, yeah. for the text. <laughs> and the third, uh, the third point is on the criteria of the main establishment. When you study the EU proposition, you realize that the criteria of the main establishment is meant to determine the competent DPA, one-stop shop in case of a company having several establishments in Europe. But there is no, li no real link in the text between this notion and the responsibilities of the data controllers. The text is mute on that point. The logics of the text is to consider that the main establishment, of course, has the responsibility of treatments all over Europe, but it's not said in the text. And if it's the case, the draft proposes a very centralized <coughs> approach to privacy that may not suit every company and every country. If this solution can be adapted to online companies, it's probably more difficult for bricks and mortar. So the current proposals has to be clarified and to separate really two questions. First, the question of the one-stop shop in order to simplify the relationship between DPA and companies. Does all corporate organization need it? Could it be an option, or has it to be an obligation? And what is the <coughs> role of the hub DPA, of the lead DPA, in that scheme compared to the other DPAs? First question. Second question, how business want to organize the scheme of responsibilities of data controllers all over Europe. 
does all business from a centralized approach or a decentralized approach? Probably it depends on the corporate culture. So we reflect in France on these subjects, <coughs> and I hope we will, we will soon be able to make a proposition on it, interesting both formalities and enforcement. Fourth point, the place of Europe. I told you it was one of the key objectives also of the directive. One very positive point, of course, is the submission of foreign companies to European law once a European consumer is concerned. This is a huge progress in terms of European identity and tools, and it will hush up foreign companies escaping protection, privacy protection, because they are located in Palo Alto or in India. But as far as international transfers are concerned, which I guess is for you a major guess, a, a major concern, sorry, there is still progress to make. We are happy with the recognition of the BCR, but we feel they should be asked more. BCR should not be seen only as a strict legal instrument to frame EU transfers, but as a baseline for global privacy program, covering all exchanges of personal data within and outside of multinationals. In this regard, we need to work on extending BCR to transfers made with third parties and identify BCR scalable solutions for small companies. Besides, and it was one of the last discussions you had in the round table, we should reflect on interoperability. Interoperability is one of the most trickiest problem, I think, as long as privacy is concerned. For international actors like you, the question is crucial. CNIL is working with the US Department of Commerce to identify connections between BCR and CDPRs. And I guess we are going to work quite a lot of time on these issues. But the key questions, and I want to share it with you, will remain very difficult to solve. Do we want a kind of common international standard all over the world, whatever the legal basis of it? Or do we accept some differences in different parts of the world as long as they operationally, legally work? So as a conclusion, I think we, the draft revision is an, in a, an historical moment for all of us. <coughs> We're going to build the privacy protection for the next, not century, but for the next years. We are actively working on the revision of the directive, in particular within the G29, in order to improve the draft regulation, and I hope we're going to have some propositions very soon. We will maintain a close relationship with business in order to find new ways of achieving mutual understanding and to move from theory to practice and find pragmatic solutions. And I think privacy is a real opportunity for business. And also, we will continue on our ongoing work with the US Department of Commerce to build some kind of interoperability. Thank you. comments you made on main establishment actually hit the point exactly to what one of the main concerns of business are because a lot of business is looking at the benefit of a centralized architecture and the current phrasing in terms of data controller does not seem to have that concept and I was just <coughs> wondering if you could perhaps elaborate on what you thought the, the option to fix that was in terms of how that might work would it be to have the text refer to organizations as opposed to businesses or to create the option, as you said, for those who would prefer to be distributed versus those who would prefer to be centralized? I think, as I said, there are two different questions. One is a sort of administrative organization. We want to go through one hub 
and one dB dPa because it's more simple. And the other question is a much more delicate question. It is an operational <coughs> question for the industry. And I think on that second question, it really depends on the sort of corporate culture that you have. And so we're still reflecting, and I'm not going to answer very precisely to your question, but I think we may have a proposition to the Commission in order to, to improve the text and to stick to the business reality, you know, because I think it's very important to have a text that is not a, sort of a theoretical approach, but that is based from the ground, you know. So I hope in the next weeks we'll be able to answer precisely with your question. That was a wonderful speech. Thank you very much. One, one question is you look forward to possible interoperability. How do you see that happening in the absence of legislation, but in the presence of a series of codes of conduct in the United States? Because legislation in the United States takes time, and that time will come, but it's not a one-year or, or even a two-year proposition usually, but there will be progress on codes of conduct. Do you see those forming a basis for interoperability in the areas co covered by the codes of conduct if they meet adequate standards? I think your, your question or reflection is very essential. Even if we are gradually converging, there are still a major difference between our systems. And uh, one is binding, and the other one, until now, is non-binding. So there is a question of, of level of protection. Do we want, even in, in the non-binding approach, the same level of protection? And right now, I think there is a difference in terms of level, level of protection between the EU and the United States. We must face it. And second, uh, do we have some kind of legal instruments in order to articulate the two approaches? So it's a, it's a very tricky question. And um, if we are very optimistic, we can say we're going to build a common standard in the next years. And if we are more realistic, we say, let's try to articulate the two systems. So, you know, work in progress, has said somebody before me. Yes. Perhaps um, <coughs> my hope is not to approach the question, because I'm not used to that domain, but uh, I wonder what will be the future of uh, national entities in a frame of uh, European uh, uh, legal, uh, as you describe, and uh, I wonder if, like in the money domain, we could have sort of uh, uh, information central bank, like, like we have uh, ECB in Europe with uh, national entities in a network, uh, coordinated network uh, on that topic. I think we need more integration, we need more cooperation between the national DPAs. And it's true that within the new environment, we just can't stay on our own territory. We need to share reflections, we need to share operational actions, more than we had done in the last years. So it doesn't mean necessarily that the, the national authorities will have their work, their place decreasing, the, 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 the job, I mean, their place will evolve, this is for sure. But I think they still will have a very important role for their citizens, because they will be the entity to which the citizen, in case of a problem, will turn themselves. So, but where you're right is that um, their activities are going to change within the next few years. Hello, bonjour. In fact, I have two questions. I think it's okay. Uh, the first question, <laughs> the first question, is related to uh, the, the data processor painting rules. I would like to, to know if, uh, from your point of view, and uh, if, it, if it will be included in the new framework, the data processor painting corporate rules. 
sous les, euh, les DCR sous-traitants. The second question is um, related to the, the opinions uh, addressed by the Article 29 group. Uh, will there be a binding to, to, the, to all the TPAs in each country? Or will there remain a formal opinion but without any, without any binding uh, uh, effect? Okay, so on the DCR process, uh, maybe I'll let <coughs> Nicola answer the, the question. Because, uh, of course, it's in the project of the Commission, but uh, he will be a better advocate than I am. And, but we favor it. And on the second point, what is going to be the evolution of the G29? Will it go until uh, to express binding opinions? Right now, in the text, it's not the case. But I feel that we need to have some kind of... Uh, more integrated cooperation within the G29, which means that we need to have tricks or tools, interests for the DPAs to cooperate and to apply the results of the cooperation. Because we won't be strong enough if we are only national. Let's face it. So we definitely need to have that. Uh, quickly on the BCR for processor, uh, the Commission also supports the BCR for processors. It, there is an ongoing preparatory work within the BP29 on it, and there are some draft texts. So, so I think you, you can liaise with any member of the even the need on, on this uh, and see the draft text and, and have discussion with them on on how it will work. The idea is that. Uh, you could have BCRs that could cover the whole ecosystem of a company, but let's see how it develops. It's, it's, there's a lot of work to be done for this, but our text makes it possible. Thank you very much.